So when it comes to lasers, you ever think we'll be able to make them so that we can shoot them out of our eyes? Chuck, you, 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 read, you see too many movies. Just get real. How's this for real? <laughs> We've all heard about lasers. We, we, we know the word. You know it's an acronym. Yes, yes, I did know that. Well, let me hear it. Wait, how do you spell Laser, L-A-S-E-R. Oh, okay, light <laughs> amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Bada bing. There you go. Or stimulation of radiation. That's sexy lasers. Okay, maybe We not. go back to 1917. <laughs> okay. Albert Einstein. I love how you just ignored me. <laughs> Albert Einstein. <laughs> Little do most people know that he basically introduced the physics concept of a laser. Whoa, it, wait a minute. Are you for real? Yes. And 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 he, he should have got a Nobel Prize. For, he should have gotten like eight Nobel Prizes. Exactly. And he got one, but he should have gotten eight. He should have, right. Okay, so one of them was writing down the equation that allows us to even know and understand that a laser can exist. Wow. Okay. Wait a minute. So there were no lasers, and then he mathematically said, yo, check out this laser. No, no. He wrote a research paper establishing the principle of the laser, the laser would take another 43 years before it got invented. Oh, that is so That's how ahead of the times dope. he was. Okay. Oh my God. Right. So the way it works is you have an atom and it has electrons. Right. And the electrons, if you excite the atom, can have an electron bump up to a higher level. Okay. Think of it as energy. Think of it as like rungs of a ladder right. or, or uh, uh, floors of an elevator in a building. Right. Electrons can hang out. They can hang out at a higher level. Okay. So it's like deuces. I'm going out. There you go. Right. So now there it is. Now the electron doesn't stay there. It wants to, the, the whole system wants to de-excite. And depending on the energy level, depending on the atom, depending on the conditions, the electron can stay there a short amount of time or slightly longer. Before it de-excites. Okay. okay. Just that's basic electron transitions in atoms. There you go. Basic. It's, it gets excited and then it calms down. De-excite. It calms down. Right. Correct. Okay. And it does that all by itself. Oh, nice. Okay, so now watch. If you send light with exactly the amount of energy to allow an electron to go from here to there, mm -hmm. it'll get absorbed, the electron will go up. Okay. Then when the electron de-excites, it sends back out exactly that same photon. Like a club that's reached capacity. Two One people in, in two, two people, people out. Exactly. And, it's, and would it be the same? <laughs> would it look the same? This, this would have the, a photon with the same amount of energy right. coming out. Now, it turns out that the photon that excited this energy level, this is Einstein's brilliance, it ex if you bathe this set of atoms in those photons, those photons will not only excite the atom, okay. they will actively de-excite the atom okay. just, just by being in the bath. Nice. It's a spooky fact. That's kind of the reverse of being in the bath with me. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, so that's the spooky fact. That's the stimulated emission. Right. So there's the electron. It's going to de-excite itself yeah, right. on, on its own time. On its own time. Right. But if you put it in a bath of these photons, It'll make it happen faster. Right. So it goes up and it comes right back down, but that's all contrived by the bath of photons. It'll make it come back right, faster. Right faster. And, and by coming down, it emits another photon. Right. So now. So this oh builds. Oh my God. That's what I'm saying. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Oh, oh this is so cool. Oh. Right, right, right. Right. Okay. So you create a cavity. Right. A very special cavity with two reflective sides. Okay. So that when the, when the photon of light gets created, it can stay in there right. and go back and forth and get magnified by this phenomenon. Right. As long as this medium has these kinds of atoms that will respond to that photon. Right. So you're exciting the atoms, but you're amplifying the excitement. Oh, snap. Damn it. That's amazing. <laughs> and we just created the whole acronym, Light Amplification by the Stimulated Emission of the Radiation. That is amazing. Wait a minute. He figured this out without it being able the to man, test it. He had an understanding of, of light and atoms and and photons, and out came this calculation. It was a calculation. Wow. It was a calculation that that should happen. And, sure and it enough, didn't it happen until 43 years we, later. We didn't make a box to have that happen until, until the early 1960s. Wow. Right. And so back then, lasers were like expensive and they were rare. And come the late 60s, early 70s, you know who had a lot of lasers? 
Goldfinger. <laughs> oh, Goldfinger, I forgot about that. Goldfinger, he yes. had like some big diabolical yes. uh, 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 evil evil man laser. Exactly, <laughs> like the best villain line ever. Wait, is that the one where the, James Bond is strapped to yes. a table yes. and the laser's coming and right, he, right up, right up his, his you, business? You expect me to talk? <laughs> no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> Was that the line? That's what the line. Dude. That's a great line. You scare me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to get out more, you know? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so that's a big old laser, okay. Uh, so now lasers are like impulse items at Kmart, right? I mean, they're not something that you need, like, license to get or find in a laboratory. Because they got cheaper, better. Um, and so now we have uh, a, a low-power household lasers. Right. You have very high powers that are still used in laboratories and things. Right. Uh, anyhow, so I never leave home without... Lasers. I I do know yeah. that. So I, I have a, a, an assortment of them here. So this is this is one. Uh, this I got people who dope up my lasers. Oh really? Uh, up in the Bronx. You don't have people to do that? No. Okay. So this is particularly bright. So just look at this is a dark shirt. Okay. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Jeez. Oh! So so this is bright enough to. I'm scared to look so at it. So when I use this at night, because I'm a planetarium director. This beam will will go sixty miles into the sky, yeah, and I can point out stars and constellations. That is amazing. It, it's, of, of course, it's dangerous for airplanes, and you, well, yeah, you, it's you a, never do that. I'm, right. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, I got the, my, well, I'm sure. Yeah, you know people. I got, <laughs> no. I know you know people. <laughs> so that's yeah. that one. So a red, a little, a little known fact: a red laser and a green laser of equal power. Mm -hmm. The green laser is brighter, okay. even though they have the same power. Why? Because your retina is two or three times more sensitive to green light than it is to red light. Gotcha. So the same brightness, energy brightness, the green will look brighter. So my two lasers here are green because mm -hmm. I'm pointing out stars in the night sky. So I can use the same amount of energy you'd have in your red laser, but it would be that much more visible to everyone assembled. Mm -hmm. So lasers had originally industrial applications. Right. But still, like, what are you going to do with a beam that thing? And so clever people started saying, hey, we can do a skin peel. So depending on the frequency of light that the laser is, it can have different penetration depths right. of certain materials, including your skin. Right. So you can actually figure out exactly how many how, layers how of many the layers dermis down, you can go you, down you can then, and then burn and, that off. Burn that off because it's a very high intensity light. Right. And so there's a lot of energy focused in one place because of this cavity that builds the light and then the, the light comes out. So so, uh, so there's that. And I, I keep wondering if Einstein only knew that in 1917 this brilliant concept would be used for cosmetic, <laughs> for skin yeah. peel. Right. I don't think, yeah. <laughs> I make this. I'm just wondering. Right. I'm just wondering. So um, these are some of the applications of lasers. And of course, the military. Well, of course. Yeah, you get a, a, a pumped up enough laser, and you want to talk about Star Wars, you can go into orbit and aim it at the sensitive circuitry of an enemy or rogue satellite. And people think in war you want to blow stuff up. No, no you just want to disable just, it. Right. That, you that, take it out. Just take it out. So if there's some part of the hardware that's more sensitive than other parts, you hit a laser to it, it melts it, burns it, fries the circuit, the, 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 the satellite's d dead in the water. Got a couple more examples. Okay. Also in medicine. Right. So uh, it turns out the he hemoglobin, just blood cells, right. are highly absorbent in green oh, okay. light. So if you, if you have a very intense green laser, you can actually cauterize an open wound. Nice. By this method. Right. Because that's, that's the blood cells that you're trying to sort of stop right. wherever they're going. You can just... Basically, you, you singe Fuse it. Fuse them. Yeah, basically, yeah. you singe that. Right. right. It's kind of walled off. Walled off, exactly. A big, beautiful wall <laughs> of flesh. Go ahead. <laughs> wall, dot, 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 of flesh. <laughs> okay. Um, and you can have very high-intensity lasers that are not just sort of killing a cell or burning it, but actually vaporizing it. So there's some lasers that are powerful enough to vaporize cancer cells. If you've identified a tumor... Or, or the like. Uh, and so that gets us to, uh, what else is there? What are we using lasers for? How about when you look inside to scan your food at the supermarket? Oh, 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 oh barcodes. 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 That's it's just a barcode. Right. So barcodes are just lines of different thickness. Right. And actually, they're lines that represent a series of numbers. Okay. You could type in those numbers if you wanted and get the same information that's in the barcode. Right. But the point is a laser, does, boop, it's got it, the price, it's built into the code. So all the numbers all there. are there, boom. It's all there. And you can get even more information if you make it two-dimensional. 
Because a barcode is just one dimension. Right. All right? It's all there's lines of different thicknesses in one dimension. Right. You can make a two-dimensional barcode, which is basically a QR code. Oh, that's a little square. It's a square with thing. The Rorschach for yeah, the, the laser. The... <laughs> oh, tell, me, <laughs> tell me what you see, laser. <laughs> so I see my father never <laughs> loved me. So you know what would be cool? If you had like a three-dimensional storage of information, like a holographic... Uh, so the, the 3D version of the QR. Wow. The QR is a 2D version of the barcode. Right. That'd be an interesting way. You I believe store like boatloads of information in a in a three-dimensional uh, barcode. I, w I believe we call that Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, stop. <laughs> so Chuck, are we done with lasers? Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'd no. just like to take one of... Okay. Taking my okay. lasers. Okay. All right. My lasers. In that case, maybe I'll just take the time to tell you guys about Storyblocks. Hey, do you know the key to making a professional-looking video? It's Storyblocks. We even use it here at Star Talk. I didn't know that. Yeah, as you... a matter of fact, you probably saw some of their clips in this video. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Storyblocks gives you studio-quality stock video without blowing up your budget. You get unlimited downloads of anything in their video member library, including 4K footage, After Effects, templates, motion backgrounds, and more when you sign up for the unlimited video plan. I guarantee you it's much easier and cheaper to find the video you need on Storyblocks than it is to make it yourself. And really, how are you gonna get that video anyway? Suppose you need the perfect aerial shot of the Statue of Liberty. What are you gonna do? Go ahead and get a helicopter, fly around the Statue of Liberty until you get the perfect shot, find somebody that can edit that for you, Fly over a restricted air. You get what I'm saying. I get the point. You get Chuck the point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the link in the description to learn more about Storyblocks video. That's storyblocks.com slash startalk. And as always, keep looking up.